Of all the Ace Attorney cases that have received distaste from the community over the years, none stands taller or shorter than Turnabout Big Top. In my video, The Worst Ace Attorney Case, there are a multitude of comments wondering, why not Turnabout Big Top? What about Turnabout Big Top? Turnabout Big Top? It's a notorious case considered by many as having some of the worst characters, some of the worst music, and some of the worst humor in the entire series. Unfortunately, I have a bit of a soft spot for this case, no matter how many times I play it. I'm not saying it doesn't have its flaws, but I can't even say it's in my bottom 5 least favorite cases in the series. Let's set the scene. Phoenix Wright is on his 8th case, and it takes him to the Barry Bait Circus. On paper, this seems like a great idea for the Ace Attorney franchise. The series has always thrived off the wackiness and zaniness of its cast, but I think they may have pushed it a little too far. The most obvious thing you'll notice is the music. It's circus music, which made sense given that the case is at a circus, but the issue is that this music will play throughout pretty much the whole duration of this case. It gets unbearable, fast. For a series that usually has bangers in its soundtrack, this one flopped really hard. The solution to this probably would have been to make this exclusively Moe's theme, given its peppiness, and develop different themes for the other characters that didn't flesh out their personalities, so that this particular song doesn't destroy my sanity, but maybe that's asking for too much. It's obviously not the biggest issue of this case, but it definitely hinders the ability to immerse yourself in the case when all you want to do is mute the DS console. Let's pause for a second. While I did say music wasn't the biggest issue, I can understand the argument that it is. Music sets the atmosphere and tone of the game and has been especially important for making Ace Attorney's characterizations and narratives come to life. In the last case of Justice for All, when Edgeworth interrupts Francisca's rant about how she would have won if it weren't for traitors like Gumshoe, and Edgeworth's great revival theme plays, there's this feeling of hope that this man has changed since the first game, that he's no longer the man who only seeks perfection. We wonder if Wright hates Edgeworth because Edgeworth has found the ability to change and evolve as a character after taking his time to travel abroad and self-reflect on the events of Turnabout Goodbyes, no longer seeing the courtroom as a place to win or lose, but as a means to find the truth. It's a powerful song and complements the dialogue, but in turn about Beethoven, having just really tasteless circus music play whenever the circus characters are on the screen detracts from how distinct each one of them should be, and the end result is that they end up meshing together in your mind because the theme is so mind-numbingly dry. Let's get back to the case. The premise of this case is that the ringmaster, Russell Berry, was smashed over the head with a blunt object, and there's quite a bit of evidence pointing towards Maximilian Galactica, magician extraordinaire, as the culprit, including his iconic, one-of-a-kind hat, which was found at the scene of the crime. The fact that Mats was the last person to interact with the ringmaster before his untimely death, and the fact that a witness saw Mats do the deed and then fly away, is really the nail in the coffin. It's probably one of the more outlandish ways to propose a killer escaped the crime scene, and the prostitution never even tries to explain just how Mats can do that without the necessary props and setup. It's just taken for granted that he can just fly on command, I guess. I do think the core of the case is interesting, especially how it sets up something magical that no one has an explanation for, but as we uncover the reality of the case, in a sense the truth is even more magical. The real problems start to unravel when we meet the rest of the cast. There's really no redeeming qualities to most of the characters in this case, and similar to the music, they're really annoying. Mats, the magician and our client, is a fascinating character in theory. He is full of ambition, rising from a literal nobody from the farmlands to a world-class magician. However, while he tries to inspire others by showing them how if he can find success, they can too, his dialogue is basically insufferable and he really has no clue how to be a positive figure in the circus and he comes off as an egomaniac. Mo the Clown has obnoxiously unfunny dialogue and a laugh you'll get tired of seeing over and over and over. His testimony in court will make you wish you could skip this case and never look back. It is horrible, it is painful, it is excruciating. Regina is too stupid to breathe, literally unable to understand the concept of death and pain, but I'll get more into that in a moment. Ben I think would be fine if we didn't have Mo. The dynamic between an angry self-absorbed puppet and a shy master is amusing, but the problem is that it fills a similar space as Mo and wears down your patience quickly. Because it feels like they both want to be the funniest guy in the room, in the end, they drag each other down. 
Now the real problem with these characters is that what Mats, Mo, and Regina, and Ben have in common is that they just go about their regular business acting like nothing really happened at the circus. I can understand Mats because he's relatively new, but Mo, Regina, and Ben? They have no excuse. Even though at the end of the case they have this half-assed attempt at showing how the ringmaster's death affected them, throughout the majority of the case, they never seem to care about Russell Berry. They pretend like the ringmaster was such an important figure in their life and that he was irreplaceable, but during the investigation and trial, it feels like they never understand the magnitude of what's happened, and they keep cracking jokes and being annoying. While Ace Attorney is known for its eccentric characters, it would have been interesting to see characters you'd expect to be jovial and all over the place be somber and sad at the realization that their boss and essentially father figure, or for Regina, literal father, has died. These characters are basically soulless. Now Acro. Acro is my favorite wasted potential in the whole series. Acro's brother Bat was put into a coma because of a prank Regina did involving a lion and some pepper and because she has no idea what it means to hurt someone, she just lives her life happy to lucky with zero regard for the pain she caused Acro and Bat. Obviously Acro is ticked off by that and tries to kill her, but inadvertently kills her father instead, which is the crux of this case. Now, this incident is interesting because it makes you wonder if Acro was justified in his actions. Regina's prank essentially killed Bad, putting him in a coma for an indeterminate amount of time, but she never faces the consequences of her actions, even after the case concludes. In Acro's pursuit to create his own justice, he accidentally kills the person who cared for him and his brother when no one else would, by giving them a home and a job at the circus. When we put our whole argument on the line and show that Acro was hiding the murderer's bust in his wheelchair, there's a moment when no music plays and perhaps you're like me and wonder, did I make the right choice? Acro hides the bust in his wheelchair, carrying it around with him because he has no other option. He's confined to his room due to his disability and Von Karma's surprise search eliminated any potential opportunities he could have had to get rid of it. As the camera zooms down to show just how big Acro's wheelchair is and how he covers up a majority of it with a blanket, it becomes apparent that, as Holmes famously says, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. He hides the crime, not really because he doesn't want to face the guilty verdict, but because he wants to be able to see his brother open his eyes again. For me, this case was especially important because it was the first time I really felt bad for the killer. In prior cases, the murderers were the embodiments of pure evil and selfishness, and seeing them receive their just desserts felt good. But in terms of Bait Top, learning about Acro and the dark truth in the Berry Bait Circus is saddening. I mean, if I had to deal with Regina every day, I'd probably lose my sanity too. Although most of the characters feel like filler, Acro's characterization is just some of the best in the series and makes you question whether justice was truly delivered after the trial. Acro has lost everything because of Regina his brother and his ability to use his lights, which means he is permanently confined to a wheelchair, unable to even perform in the circus he loves so much. And Acro doesn't even get mad or maniacal like the other killers when he breaks down, he just cries and apologizes. It's heart-wrenching to watch. Ultimately, this case does have a lot of problems, but I can't bring myself to list it as even close to my least favorite case. Certain elements were really well done, and there are probably ways to salvage this case. Is it bad? It's more of a letdown than anything, but it's passable in my opinion. I think a lot of people hate this case because of the very obvious flaws with it, such as the music and the majority of the characters being obnoxious, dumb as Brits, or both. But ignore or forget that there are some really good things in this case. Turnabout Bit Top is okay, and that's all I gotta say. Thank you for watching this video. My plan is to release an Ace Attorney video essay once every month or two. These take a lot more time to make than my other videos, and if you enjoy this kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll see you in the next one.